Hello and welcome to The Capital Contrarian. In this video, we will discuss three important metrics used by investors and analysts when assessing the value of a company's stock relative to its earning power. Specifically, we will look at earnings per share and by extension price-to-earnings ratio and price-to-earnings growth ratio. So let's begin with gathering an understanding of earnings per share, commonly referred to as EPS. This is a metric that represents the portion of a company's profit, or net income, that's allocated to each outstanding share of its common stock. This is simply calculated by dividing a company's net income by the number of outstanding shares. EPS is a widely used metric because it's an indicator of a company's profitability on a per-share basis. Investors and analysts will then use the EPS to get the P-E ratio. The P-E ratio is a valuation metric that measures the current market price of a company's stock relative to its earning per share, EPS. It's calculated by dividing a company's current stock price by its EPS. The P-E ratio is often used by investors to determine whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued relative to its earnings potential. A high P-E ratio can indicate that investors have high expectations for a company's future earnings growth. In contrast, a low P-E ratio may suggest that investors have little confidence in a company's growth prospects. You will typically hear P-E ranges of 10 to 20 being the sweet spot, while anything outside of that is typically more abnormal. This is because the historical 10-year annualized rolling returns you would want from investing in stocks would be around 8 to 12 percent. Doing some algebra to help visualize this, a 10x P-E means you're making 10% earnings yield, while a 20x P-E will equate to a 5% earnings yield. So 10% seems great, which means 10x P-E makes sense. But why are the 20 P-E and a 5% yield considered good if I want closer to a 10% return? Well, that's where growth comes in. The price to earnings growth, or the PEG ratio, is a variation of the PE ratio that takes into account a company's expected earnings growth rate. It's calculated by dividing a company's PE ratio by its expected earnings growth rate. The PEG ratio provides a more complete picture of a company's value by factoring in its earnings growth potential. A low PEG ratio can indicate that a company's stock is undervalued relative to its earnings growth potential while a high PEG ratio may suggest that a company's stock is overvalued. Now let's take a look into why these metrics are so common. The PE ratio is widely used because it's easy to calculate and provides a quick snapshot of a company's valuation relative to its current earnings potential. If you think a company's growth is going to play a big part in its valuation, it may be better to use a PEG ratio to capture that thought. Either way, all investors have access to these calculations through most websites like Google or Yahoo Finance. So seeing these alone will not give you any type of advantage. You'll have to go do your own research into a company to truly understand it and if the value the market is giving it is fair or if there's room for you to capture additional returns over the market. In conclusion, earnings per share, price to earnings PE ratio, and price to earnings growth PEG ratio are important metrics investors and analysts use to evaluate a company's stock but should not be used alone to make investing decisions. Always do your own research and consult before making decisions. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please let me know your thoughts on these metrics in the comment section below. Leave a like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the upcoming videos. Have a great day!